a little look at a like meter, because I know some of you may be interested. Not many, I'm sure, but maybe some. This is the Gossen Luna 6 3S. I'll show it to you. This is its lanyard, I believe it's called. Now, some of you may be wondering why on earth in 2021, when we have light meter apps in our phones, on our tablets, and we've got multi-segment, multi, 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 multi metering in cameras, and we've had light meters in cameras for as long as most of you have been on the planet, I imagine, well, maybe not, well, since the 70s. Well, this does have one little trick up its sleeve. Let's have a close-up look at it first. All sorts of information on the back. A setting uh, screw for setting the, you know, scientific environment, I believe, with a, a known quantity of light, blah, blah, blah. That's a battery check, which on mine only works sometimes, so there's obviously a little bit of uh, contamination over the years in there, I think, on the contacts. Uh, so sometimes it doesn't work, but there's a way around it. I was tempted to clean it. These are not screws, by the way, they're just standoffs. So it doesn't, uh, when you put it down on something flat, it keeps it just off to stop this getting scratched. But to get in there, you have to remove this with a heat gun. And uh, I'm thinking, leave well enough alone. This is the battery. It takes two batteries which are one, uh, 1.35 volts, which you can't get. So let me show you. There is such a thing as an adapter. I don't know if you can see that adapter. I don't want to get fingerprints on. That adapter sits inside and reduces the voltage instead of uh, 1.55 to 1.35. Neat, huh? Now which way around do they go? So that's that. I'll show you this. So you can see, perhaps, there's a red segment there. And if I put my fingernail in that battery check and move it, it may or may not work. It doesn't. If I do it several times, sometimes it does. But I've noticed that if I do it, the battery check, and then activate the meter, it does work. There. You saw actually, let me activate the meter and show you. That's where the needle would be. But if I do this, nope, it's not going to work. Just touch the meter there. Then you can see the battery's full. So there we go. Leave well enough alone is my feeling. Now, I'm going to move this to one side. We'll talk about that later. This is the one trick it has up its sleeve where you may think, why even bother using something like this? In this mode, it works as a reflective light meter, so it measures the light being reflected. And you've got two ranges, which you can see if I do this. There it's on, you'll see nothing, but it's switched on. And this one has a, another device that comes across for a second range. First range. Let me show you what that means. Here we are for higher light settings. If I do this, that's okay. It moves to 16. If I do the other one, you can see it went right off the scale and I stopped because I don't think it's a good idea to leave it overloading, as it were. 
So you just figure out which one you want to use. This one has a range from 1 to 12 and the brighter light setting, because I'm pointing towards the camera lights at the moment, goes from 12 to 22. It's settled there. I take my, It locks when I take my finger off and I can see that it's on 15 where the needle is. Okay. Looking here then, we have the ISO or the DIN. I'm going to set it to 400, shall we? set to 400. That reading I took, which is still there, says 15. So I turn this to the yellow marker. These other markers mean other things. You can look it up if you like. I don't, I've forgotten what they mean. I don't use them. So I set it to 15. And then I can read off my shutter speeds and aperture. So I could have, uh, I haven't got an f1 lens or a 0.7 lens, but I have got an f4. So f4 would be 2,000-ish, pretty much. F2, 1,000, of course. F2.8, 500. On we go, round to uh, F22 at 1 8th. Simple as that. This has got exposure compensation built in. So if I do this, you can see there where the zero is. It's um, in the middle of 1 and minus 1. Uh, but I can turn that marker and that will give me some compensation. And when I do that, it reveals this red area here. So it reminds me that I've put in some compensation. Anything else? Don't know what all this is. I think that might be zone stuff, which I don't use. So now we come to its um, pierce de resistance. I'm not sure what the angle is that it measures. But I can't, I'm still thinking that's all very nice, isn't it? But, you know, who can be bothered with that when I've got multi, multi, multi in, my, in camera? Well, one of, the, one of the things is, what am I going to do with it? It's plastic. But I've got to tell you, <laughs> there's plastic and there's plastic. And this is serious plastic. This very smooth. So what are you going to do? throw it away. It's uh trick up its sleeve is this. You know what that is? Yes indeedy. It's an incident light cone. What that means is instead of me now pointing it at the scene, if I'm able to, depends on how far away the scene is or what's going on, but if I'm able to with this I can walk to the scene and then point this back at the camera and what it measures is the light that's falling on the scene or the subject. One more time. Reflected means I'm by the camera, I take my reading of the light reflected off the scene or the subject and take my reading. Incident means I go to the subject or the scene and I take my reading from the subject or the scene pointing this towards the camera. So you might be thinking, what's that about then? Let me tell you if I may. If I'm taking a reflected reading and I'm pointing this towards a black cat against a black background, every light meter that I know of is designed to make medium grey. I know we've got really clever stuff these days, so maybe it's a bit different, but generally speaking, underneath, the underlying thing is it measures all the tones and the bright and dark in a scene, everything, and tries to put all that together to overall give you an exposure for a medium grey, which was a Kodak grey card. Kodak produced grey cards, which you could use, which was this particular grey. And, and if the meter got that, then your whites would be white and your blacks would be black. Because that's what we went for. Of course, the trouble with that is, if you've got the black cat against a black background, it tries to make the black cat and the black background medium grey. So there's not much light coming off it. It will overexpose. If you take a picture of a white rabbit in snow, loads of light is coming to a reflected meter and it's going to try and make your white rabbit in the snow medium grey. So you'd have to use your own intelligence and your judgment 
to alter the reading. A little bit of guesswork involved. Probably in the modern cameras, there's probably, you could tell it, it's a snow scene. There's probably scene settings and all the rest of it. But you've got to go in and set that, haven't you? This then, if you can imagine, now, I'm standing by my black cat against a black background and I take my reading and it's reading the amount of light falling on the subject. So it doesn't care whether it's a black cat against a black background or a white rabbit in snow. It's just going to read the light that's actually falling on the subject and give you a reading. So it's not influenced by the subject itself at all. It's saying there's this much right light and in order to give an overall correct exposure with this much light, this is what the exposure should be, not influenced by the subject itself. I found it to be pretty good. Uh, all right, there's some problems. It's, if you're shooting across a river, you can't get across there. Uh, if the sun comes out from behind, it's all going to keep changing, but it would with a reflected light anyway. Uh, sometimes you can't get there, sometimes it's not convenient, blah, blah, blah. But I used it mostly with portraits with... Um, continuous light, either daylight or tungsten. And I tended to use that incident reading. I'd go up to the subject or the model, take the reading from there, pointing it towards the camera. Obviously, no point pointing it towards uh, anything else. So it points towards the camera. And I found the readings to be very, reli very reli reliable. Very reliable. Very reliable. There we go. Get there in the end. So there we are. And I did uh, test this against others because it hasn't been calibrated in a, a long time and it's got that slight battery which might not be exactly the right voltage. But um, I checked it against the phone one and the camera one and it's they're all very similar so I could rely on it. The Gossen Luna 6 3S. Very nice piece of equipment and still being used by yours truly.